aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another video from yours truly, the Scavenger. And before going in, of course, as you guys may have already guessed, massive spoiler, of course, of the Pokedex in Sun and Moon. And also, I should state this that. I actually try my very best to avoid being spoiled in any fashion, but uh, due to, of course, the nature of YouTube, that's an impossibility. And uh, people using thumbnails with spoiled Pokemon, yeah, it's pretty darn shitty and a very, very awful practice. And uh, it definitely ruined me so much so that eventually I just gave up. And fair enough, I watched it because there is no reason for me trying to avoid Pokemon completely for a month just because. Uh, of this, I mean, I'm going to know eventually anyway, but like I said, I would much, much rather prefer not knowing. But the thing is here, of course, Game Freak did release, of course, a demo, and um, I would say that they messed up, but I feel that's somewhat unfair, I'm sure. But um, I, I can't help feeling that they probably should have avoided uploading completely, not because necessarily. Uh, how do one say? of the leak itself, but rather that um, if you have coding, I mean they have the animation coding left, you know, the animation coding that is the sprite work and the placeholder before the animation starts, they were in the game pretty much ensuring that every Pokemon anybody I was been worrying about is in the game has been revealed and we pretty much know the exact Pokedex, but if you want to know exact Pokedex, uh, you do have to google that on your own or you know, go on Twitter, hell probably just type in Pokemon you find anybody who's just dumb enough to actually showcase everything but um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I'm not gonna give you guys at least that one I'm gonna so at least you guys can go with some blind or which one you will find outside of the new one which obviously I will talk about a little bit I'm glad that at least Game Freak were smart enough to outside of, of course having included a placeholder which is pretty darn stupid but fair enough but um, that at least they uh, shifted the stats, of course, and the um, other big part is that they uh, did not include typings or something like that. It's not a part of it, it's just a placeholder's right, sadly. But at the same time, like I said, that's a pretty big deal, sadly, due to it shows, of course, the whole Pokedex. Uh, having that said, we're gonna go over, of course, the first line of Pokemons, and this is gonna be, of course, the starters. So, the starting of final evolutions are Pokemon we have already known about. And um, it's kind of strange actually thinking that we knew about this for so long. It feels such a weird uh, that that actually passed by. Um, of course, it looks really, really nicely. Um, of course, the um, Robin Hood or Robin Group or whatever you're gonna call it is um, definitely as cool as design wise of the tree. Uh, it looks super, super awesome. Definitely a cool looking owl. Um, I like Liden's final evolution, I think uh, the wrestler kind of concept um, looks sweet. Um, kind of, kind of, I guess, uh, disappointed it got up on two legs, but you know, it is the way it is. And uh, Popolio, I do believe, the final evolution looks the part. Uh, not necessarily my interest, but at least it looks elegant. But I think I've actually picked Rowlet due to this alone. Uh, nothing more to say there. I, um, people have said or speculated that it's gonna be a dark fire type and you believe that that was the source was saying in a Chinese leak and hopefully we're gonna see a special water fairy it, it kind of looks apart with a siren and all so yeah I mean nothing to it they look great I, I love the concept I definitely do and then we got a bit weird we already know about Rocker Rock's evolution and Kamala Pokemon is actually and a single evolution, nothing to it, nothing bigger coming from it. But then we got Picky Peck, who just got full on strange. Now, I really hope these are separate evolutions, but it doesn't look like that. It definitely doesn't look like that. Uh, so it, it's quite the contrast from the original evolutions. I love that. I think that's that's, that's strange and weird things. I'm from Woodpecker to that. I, I don't know what that bird is called, but definitely it's a unique bird. Definitely a tropical bird, so it makes sense at the same time that you know it could, it might as well be a standalone of Pokemon, but it's just so big. The sprite work is so big on it that it has to be a fan illusion of the Tiki Peck. And then we have the average stuff they were already said, of course, the Yum Goose and Vika Bolt and whatnot. And yeah, nothing really big to them now, is it? 
And then we come to probably the more interesting part, and that is that both Grandpa and Brixian are standalone Pokémon. Uh, we got the Fairy Bug, which already introduced, the um, Pikachu clone, which already is introduced, and then we got the Saladin, who do evolve at least once and become a bit more Raptor-like, and I like that concept. And um, it would have been great if it wasn't so that uh, the Wimpod is turning out to be something else. <laughs> I love that. It becomes like this great, what Cabotops probably should have been thinking about it. But seriously, if this guy keeps his water uh, bug typing and becomes offensively, we got a real threat on our hands, and I'm sorry to say it, but this is probably my absolute favorite evolution from Sun and Moon, and I'm not disappointed that I looked at the Pokedex due to this alone, because that guy looks super intimidating. And then for the next page, there are only Pokemons we already know about, so... Fair enough, um, I have really nothing to say about these, I do like that all the grass types are so close to one another. Uh, Mudstail looks super super sweet, and um, I don't care about the dancing Pokemon, but the Mantis Pokemon is what I like. The, the one um, that is turned out from uh, that poisonous berry, or the poisonous fruit from um, Hawaii, who turns out to be some kind of strange um, humanoid hybrid. Um, looks super super like it looks disgusting to me uh, is what it comes down to so I'm not necessarily looking forward to see everybody trying to sexualize that Pokemon because that is just it's just nasty is what I'm trying to say but the Mantis Pokemon A plus they're definitely looking forward to uh, offensive grass type to summer that looks super sweet and then we come to a bit of a new evolution uh, the ground ghost castle is the same there, the, the new like gathering Pokemon, the schooling Pokemon is the same. Uh, Pukumuku, of course, the sea urchin, I do believe, is um, actually a single evolution, and that's gonna be super interesting. Did not see that one coming. The mushroom Pokemon turns out to be a much, much bigger, scarier mushroom. Uh, so much, it looks super, super scary. It looks uh, definitely like some kind of ghost movie, if you ask me. That's a, that's a stalker if I ever saw one. So, a fairy, of course, in grass type, like William Scott. Super, super exciting. Uh, then we got, of course, the um, crab boxer, um, coconut crab evolution. And it's gonna be, of course, fighting still. Question is, what type of fighting combination? I really hope they go with ground on this one. But it could just be a standalone fighting Pokemon. But the color kind of gives it away to be water. But they already stated that that's not going to be the case since the previous evolution is not that. And Coconut Crab is somewhat famous for being land crabs. So I really hope they go with a ground concept because that would be our first fighting ground Pokemon, I do believe. And that is something I want to see. Coming in next is actually a plethora of new Pokemons. Uh, we got, of course, um, I really can't stress enough what that is. Outside of, of course the monkeys, which you completely ignore here, but the guy who evolved from some kind of urchin or some kind of deep sea um, organism basically. I don't know what it is, but I really hope it's a water steel type or anything like that. I devil, it looks like it's something that's gonna be a, a little bulkier. And then we have of course the anchor, which also looks strange. I did actually see concept for the anchor before. And didn't believe it was real, so once I saw this now again, I was like, oh shit, I mean, I saw this in uh, August, I do believe, that it was going to be an anchor light Pokemon, but I was really just, eh, probably just fan art, didn't really think much of it. I'm, I'm trying to find that old picture, but I can't, I can't really get a grasp of mind who posted it. But it looks cool, and I really hope that turns out to be a water ghost, because they are somewhat scarce with only Yelly Sand as of right now. And uh, then we have, of course, the spider water spider or the ocean spider I really really think this guy is gonna be a water bug it has to be and that concept looks so cool cool it looks like a super like, a, like an alien if anything like with space mask and whatnot or space helmet so that is probably a Pokemon we'll use too so uh, hopefully Wimpod and that, that Pokemon is not separated for each game because then I will be a very very sad man and on the next page here, we are actually gonna see um, the Ultra Beasts, which actually are 
Wait, what's that? I do believe eighth? Which is just insane. And of course, the totem Pokemon, which are four. And uh, I would do believe the word Ghost, Ghost Fairy, Electric Fairy, Psychic Fairy, and uh, Grass Fairy. Could be wrong about that. Um, they're not revealed by any chance, but I think I'm wrong anyway. Um, <laughs> and of course, uh, Type Null and uh, Seal Valley. And nothing really big to them. But the Ultra Beast is probably one that are more exciting because it actually turns out to be, of course, eight of them. And not only that, but due to the information that got revealed this morning, Ultra Beast will be catchable. And that's going to be a very, very interesting. Um, because that means that they will have an offensive typing. Uh, hopefully strange typings, because you really, out of looking them alone, you really don't see what they will become. But they look super, super spacey in, in a way that I actually enjoy. I don't know if they'll really regard as legendaries or, you know, the 600 base Pokemon, basically. But I think they'll be... Probably the definition of a roaming Pokemon, which means that they will not be overly broken, but definitely stand like, stronger than your average Mon. And basically looking at something like 550 to 600 base power or base stats, and I could live with that. I hope the typings are unique, that's really all that one care for in the end, so yeah. That's really all I have to say. I uh, can't wait to actually get to see how this plays out in the game, really. And for the last page, we're of course gonna check out the legendaries of this generation. And uh, first of all, Lunala and Solgaleo have a pre-evolution. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, I mean, it's simply like the Manaphy Fiona situation, but they really have to showcase that himself. Uh, Magierna has already been kind of confirmed to be the Mew of this generation. And, uh, yeah, nothing to it. Nothing really big to it. You hear a strange man, ah, that voice, that, that's just about right. And then we have the Ma Shadow, which is the one that they kind of reveal as unique typing, and people are really excited what kind of beast is this. It's just a little puffy, cute thing, and I, I kind of like that Game Freak never hyped this up. They never tried it, but uh, of course, people got excited with the Chinese League that, you know, it's going to be a unique typing. Therefore, I mean, the counterpart, of course, these two uh, legendaries that to suppress their power, you needed something more balanced. And, uh, of course, a beast that, was, of course, pushed them down. And seeing this little guy being that, it just melts my heart. I do love the concept of that. You don't have to be a super being to be super powerful. That's, you know, that the little guys can come through sometime, right? And um, we just have to see what that is when it comes to that. This Pokemon alone, they haven't showcased it. It's going to be hidden. I don't think it's gonna reveal it, and it's gonna be a unique way to get it, as always. But that's about it. That's the whole reveal. That's the whole Pokedex. Do you believe that was basically with everything included around 80 months, which basically would have pushed the um, Pokedex over 800. But um, I know people have been mixed about this, that, oh, the, the Pokedex is so small, etc. One has to remember that um, X and Y's Pokedex is probably one of the few where it was really, really small too, and people were disappointed about it. But there were a lot of relevant mods, though. If you look into the X and Y's roster, we had a lot of unique typings. Uh, we had a lot of Pokemon that worked uh, competitively. There basically wasn't any filler mods. I do believe the closest to a filler mod we have is Clawlister, basically, from X and Y. So seeing a, f a lot less Pokemons and probably more unique ones, I'd rather have that. I'd rather have that. Um, since, it, of course, Poke Pokemon gets bigger and bigger, I'd rather see things ex expand outside of that. Um, there are also Lowland Pokemon that's been revealed, both like Trio and Golem. I'm not going to go over them all that much. Uh, say I laughed about Dug Trio. I didn't find it in the game myself in the demo, but heard that it was in the demo, which was, <laughs> how was that? That's kind of um, cool, but um, yeah, kind of enforces that it will be only Generation 1 Kalos Pokemon that is going to be a lonely form, and there really weren't that many, and um, yeah, hopefully they get something more exciting. Um, I'll probably go over this a lot more once the game comes out, but as it stands now, this is the Pokedex, this is the tools we're going to have to use with, or work with, and um, I mean, a competitive scene is a month away. 
and having no which one that are in the game may or may not actually help out. I definitely know which Pokemon I do want. And that's a huge perk going into this. And now I can actually watch YouTube as regular. Uh, so for you guys who have been watching, um, and short, of course, not write too much stuff about spoilery stuff in the comments here. And um, I'll try to read them. I'll, I'll, I'll will read them, of course. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And I see you in the next video. And hopefully that will be more exciting stuff that has with Pokemon Auras and Wi-Fi battle been doing. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And I see you in the next video. Until then, take care.